Yo, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. Welcome back to some more off grid gameplay. I have been trying to get to this for some time now, so I do apologize that it's been quite a while since my last off grid gameplay uh, video. There's been a lot going on. Uh, if you are a citizen, I'm sure you're probably aware of all the things that are happening. We've got a letter from the chairman. We've got a new overdrive initiative kicking off, uh, dynamic event stuff. There is a ton of things happening in the world of Star Citizen, and it is a very exciting time to be a citizen or civilian. Not everybody wants to play through Squadron. But today, I'm just going to do uh, a little bit of gameplay uh, as normal, off-grid stuff, this time with the Vulture. Someone seems to have a farm going on here with whatever these are. I actually don't know what kind of plant these are. First time I saw them was on Dama. Uh, but yeah, we're at a place called Moreland Hills, which is very close by to Harper's Point. It's, um, if you go to the heading or sort of aim your ship from Harper's Point to the heading of 335 degrees, and travel for about 54.9 kilometers, you will find this place. And if you look up there, that's Moreland Hills, where there's a uh, sort of a settlement, a ruined settlement like, like other ones with NPCs. But also further down the hill, which I hadn't realized until recently. Oh, there's a beer there, a couple of beers. There's um, this little farmstead, which is a really nice place. I think if I hadn't discovered, or if I, wasn't so enamored with Astor's clearing, I would probably stay here for a while. We might do so. I'm a nomad. I can float around where I want. Anyway, so yeah, the, the sun is going down, so we've got to kind of make tracks, but let me just see if I can find anything. This place is often left untouched in terms of gear, because not many people know about it or know how to get to it, which is lovely. Hmm. Not a lot of room to put stuff in. You don't have a local inventory, which does make it somewhat difficult. And that doesn't seem to want to sit down there for the time being. We'll figure it out. Might be able to take that over. And then we've got all these gems to gather up, which I will do so as well. Uh, off screen, of course, because it would take forever. But what I want to do is I'll probably head off first off rather than looting this place. Uh, and see if there's... Oh, there's NPCs here as well. See if there are any ships to salvage and scavenge. See what's out there for me. Just take it nice and steady. Uh, and then when the sun goes down, probably call it a day. But yeah, there's uh, there's a lot going on in the world of Star Citizen. Chris Roberts has addressed the plan to get to a Star Citizen 1.0, which is out of alpha, out of beta. Basically a release candidate of Star Citizen with whatever that entails. And whatever features they are, the roadmap, when that does finally update, should let us know what they consider to be a 1.0. Ooh, there's quite a lot of nice stuff here. Let's take that. Uh, we'll take that. We'll equip that, actually. And uh, take the other one. Oh, I can't. Too full. The multi-tool, we'll equip that. And that that's set us up nicely. Got some liquids as well. Can't put that in there. Not enough room, but I can put them on the floor. But yeah, it's, uh, things are moving on super quick now that the Persistent Entity Streaming was done, which was the 318 patch, and if I know many of you joined around that time, and it was pretty dire for a long time, where the databases were struggling a lot, and people couldn't even get into the game. They couldn't even launch the game. It was Their accounts were somewhat ruined. Uh, thankfully, we're past that now. And server meshing, replication layer, which should be coming in the 323 branch. I don't know if it's coming with the initial 323 build. We'll go and check up there, see what we can find. Uh, but sometime within 323 will help to just smooth things out. And then, obviously, server meshing slated around summertime this year. Things seem to be scaling up. And I, I'm i struggling to cope, if I'm honest. It's getting a bit too exciting for me. And I, uh, my mind is just exploding with excitement. Trying to figure out what to do and where to go and what's going to change. Oh, it is a great time to be a citizen. 
but it's all good stuff. It's nothing, nothing is bad about it. It's just, I've been here for such a long time waiting for these moments to happen and they are finally happening. Oh wait, the doors seemed a little loud. But yeah, we'll come back and loot all that. Because there's some good gear there. But let's just check on top of this hillside what's going on up there. Doesn't seem to be any ships. But yeah, so technically 2024, 2025, I feel like are going to be the most influential years for Star Citizen, culminating in a version 1.0 release, which is just a moment. I mean, we have, we have all been dreaming about, regardless of when you've uh, joined the project. Front impact warning. And it's all that time spent working on it has is finally starting to pay off. Well, I mean, it already has paid off, but it's going to explode. Right, let's head off to Harper's Point first, um, and we'll just see what's around. seem to have an Anvil Karak down at Harper's. Very nice big ship, that's why we're seeing it nearly 20 kilometers out. But yeah, so essentially uh, 323 is the starting point of getting, I suppose, all the work they've done for Squadron into the PU. Was that another hit? No. And then from there they will continue to roll out more of the features from Squadron. Um, and now that a lot of the squadron teams are assimilated into the PU team, which is what's taking so long for the roadmap, the progress tracker, because there's a lot of people coming on board. They want to, you know, plot out the roadmap to version 1.0, I think, is what they've said, is what Chris has said. It's, uh, we're going to see a whole lot more features coming out in somewhat quick succession. Like, the, even Chris mentioned that the the patches are going to be pretty monstrous from here on out. Which, you know, hopefully means the bugs will get fixed as well, but it might mean a little few a few more bugs from time to time. But this is it, you know, this is this is the home stretch. It's been a long time coming, but it is all paying off and that will start in 323 and then beyond. And hopefully all goes well with server meshing. It seems to be doing. So, a Karak. Let's get scanning and just see what we can learn. Chances are it's still owned. I can't imagine people would want to leave a Karak lying around, but you never know what happened that caused them to claim it on insurance. So far it's still, it seems to be still owned. down here now or if they've just logged out I know some people do use a Karak as their kind of home base put a ground vehicle in put a Pisces in the top and then um, float around nomad style yeah I think it's still owned I mean it would take a little while to chomp that up anyway but yeah nothing uh, nothing seems to be around here for me as a Salvager. So we will continue on up. Head off to Dumboro, which has actually become a little dangerous. The other day I was, I think it was Monday I was streaming uh, and went over to Dunboro. Got attacked by pirates uh, and destroyed. And, oh, sh oh sugar, oh boy, okay. Let's get out of here before I do any more damage. Uh, and then, um, 
member of my uh, Twitch stream was saying that they're thinking of doing a... Uh, his name is Lafod. Thinking of doing... Running some security at these settlements for the nomads. Kind of doing like... A bit like the CDF, the Civilian Defense Force. But just around these settlements. Uh, protecting the nomads, the people like myself that live in these areas. And I was very intrigued by this. I think it would be a very cool idea. And I think people would appreciate that a lot. And I'm thinking I might even take part in that myself. And on some occasions, mostly maybe when I'm streaming, jump into a combat ship and just float between these locations and offer protection. So if pirates come in, at least help to get these civilians out of harm's way, taking, you know, distracting these pirates while they, they escape. I think that would be kind of nice, organic, um, emergent, CIG-intended gameplay. But of course, we are all very interested to see what would warrant a version 1.0, which is, as I say, the release candidate. Uh, not completely, you know, all the features that CIG want, because what we have now is only really scratching the surface as to what Star Citizen will be. But by the time version 1.0 comes around, it'll be very interesting to see what features are around. How many systems might we have? Not many, by any means, because, you know, they're procedurally generated, so they're physical uh, planets. Which was never the plan. So, obviously, that time frame extended itself for the 100 systems. Uh, but gameplay-wise, what are we going to see? You know, the economy, the bounty hunting mechanic. What else is going to be classed as a version 1.0? That is big news that I want to know. Um, and hopefully this next roadmap update will let us know. We will see. Doesn't seem to be anything here. Oh, no, there is. There's an F8 Lightning. We'll check that out. See if it's something we can salvage. But yeah, I like the idea of just fl flying around in my... Uh, oh, another ship or vehicle. An arrow. Flying around in my combat ships, offering support to the nomads. As, you know, these videos seem to have encouraged a lot of people to do that, that very thing, which is wonderful to see. And I think it'll be so fun offering protection, chatting with the local, you know, nomads that, like myself, that float around these locations, asking if there's been any trouble. Oh, no, this is still owned. It's like the pilot might still be here. Or still logged in. Try and get the arrow information as well. See if there's anyone here to say hello to. But I don't think we will need to land, to be honest, because there's nothing. There's no point landing here. There's nothing to sell. Uh, the anvil arrow isn't coming up with an owner. And they couldn't have bedlogged, so if they've died or, you know, logged out, the ship is still owned. Uh, it is not technically fair salvage. Although, chances are they won't be able to come back to it because they'll need a lift. But, never mind. Right, last spot is Astor's Clearing. Let's go and check there, see what there is. Not finding much today, but that is the way it goes sometimes. It's not always going to be ships everywhere to salvage. But yeah, let me know in the comments if... Um, and I'll pass the information on to Lafot. Uh, if you are interested or would feel or appreciate a somewhat civilian defense force protecting civilians around these settlements. And I think there's, there's a good thing we could do there with, you know, global chat calling in and asking for help or just floating between them waiting to see what's happening is my is my gear down or up, gear up. there we go
just uh, as I was leaving Dunborough, a uh, C2 was just arriving. I think they've started doing um, RMC runs from Dunborough. I think you can probably pick it up quite cheap and make your way to our corp, potentially, to make a profit. But the other day while I was streaming, I came across a C2 at Dunborough. And when I opened the doors, because it was claimed on insurance, it was full to the brim with RMC. There was about 660 SEU of it. Just in its cargo hold. As I say, the ship was reclaimed. It was no longer owned. So uh, a couple of people watching jumped in, brought a C2, and between us, we loaded it up with, uh, you know, we transferred all that uh, RMC over. We've got a star runner here. And it was, it's just so nice seeing how this game is coming together and supporting this kind of teamwork. Which, of course, is, is what Star Citizen is all about. Uh, right now, it's a lot of it is just combat orientated because that's what most people gravitate to. But as time goes on, even now, you know, I, I generally have great interactions with the community. Uh, but as time goes on and more systems come in place, like security systems, and Stanton becomes more like it's supposed to, it's going to be more about... Um, oh, there's an Inferno here as well. It's going to be more about working together in these sorts of locations. Of, of course, if you've got a pyro, might be a little less working together and a little more shooting together, but... Um, yeah, it's fascinating to see the types of interactions that can happen already. Right, what we got? Hopefully, we can find a vehicle that we can salvage because, you know, I've got bills to pay. Got fuel to pay for, got food to buy. Oh, and uh, as I have stated in the past, oh, it seems to be targeting the wrong one, never mind. Whenever there is a sale for the Toby Eye Tracker 5, which is what I use for head tracking, I have said that I will point, point it out to people so that they can take advantage of it. And right now, I think it's actually a flight simulator promotion, but it is 15% off. So you can get it for like 230, I think it is, or 230 something, instead of the 279. So if you have been in the market for it, I do always say hold off wait for a sale because they have multiple sales throughout the year now is a good time to jump on it because you can get it at a discount uh, and also if you use the link that I have provided below that will give my channel a direct financial kickback which is extremely appreciated so if you use it or you are planning to use it thank you so much in advance ah. so the star runner seems to be taking precedence here can't seem to get the scan of this Aries because I think the signature is too strong. Ah, there we go. I think we got it now. Nope. And I don't believe this. I mean, the door's open, so it would be an easy target, but it's not popping up as unowned. So I'm going to leave it be. Whoever owns it is either hopefully around still. We'll go and say hello if there's anyone around. Um, yeah, let's just see. Unfortunately, we found nothing to salvage today, but that is, as I say, just the way the verse goes. Some days you find a lot of stuff, other days... Zilch. And now we have a salvo frag pistol. We can at least protect ourselves. Oh, I can see someone running around out there. Hopefully the friendly. We'll go and say hello. Good afternoon. I don't know if that's the owner of this uh, of this ship, <clears throat> the Starfighter, or if it's the owner of the Karak. I'll keep whistling. It's a friendly sound.
Good afternoon, how you doing? How's it going? You alright? You in need of anything? I've got a... Well, I don't actually have much to sell at the moment. Is this your mighty fine ship? Is yours the, uh, the MSR? The MSR's a beauty. Anything happen around these parts? Oh, hello. There's two of you. What are you two up to? Any of you got VoIP turned on? Oh, I'm going to carry on just checking around the place. Maybe do some looting, see what I can find. Although I'm assuming you've looted all this stuff. So yeah, they uh, unfortunately shot and killed me, which, you know, is the way it goes. They didn't just shoot and kill me, they actually shot me in the back of the head while I was incapacitated, which means I could not be revived and I had to respawn at a hospital. But this is the way it goes sometimes. People do crappy things at times and it's their own prerogative. That's, you know, the game allows this kind of thing. But after speaking to them, they sound very sincere and actually, oh, sorry, and they've, they've both sent me some cash. And now we're up to like 381,000. <laughs> Which is, uh, you know, strange behavior, but of course the game allows that kind of stuff. And in the future, if you're doing something like that in a place like Stanton, there is going to be um, more punishments as such, making it harder to, to commit criminal acts in a place like Stanton. Uh, it should still be allowed, but yeah, it's uh, going to make it more challenging. But it was kind of them to say sorry and apologize for it and send the cash as a kind of, I suppose, recompen uh, recompense. But never mind. We will go back and retrieve our body and get back to what we were doing. Anyway, so we are heading back down to grab my gear. Um, they did say they have a gift for me, which sounds a little... Uh, I don't know, worrying, but they did also send me, I believe, about 100,000 each. Not that it makes up for it, mind. I would have rather they didn't shoot me in the first place, or at least shot me if they're unsure, and then uh, revived me. But it turns out VoIP wasn't working, uh, which does kind of not bode well for communicating with each other and establishing a... I'm safe. Don't shoot. Not Although I was in my civilian outfit, so it's not like I was much of a threat. But, yeah. It's uh, interesting behavior, but at the same time, they have apologized. They've sent cash. They're trying to make up for it. Uh, assuming they don't want to suddenly destroy me again. But yeah, unfortunately, this shoot first and ask questions later is certainly a mindset that we see. And I understand it. It's better to shoot than be shot, I guess, but hopefully over time that kind of behavior will will reduce. Oh, okay, that might explain why. Let's just try and get in. Ah, screw it, it's a dud. I don't know what's going on with that, but it's a dud. Well, he's giving me my uh, a full outfit here. Look, this is what I was. Was this what I was wearing? I think he's grabbed the things that were mine. I believe. Ah, yeah, there we go. Lovely. So you see, after all that. He felt bad and got me all this equipment uh, and set me up. Oh boy, this, this terrain is not good at all. 
So yeah, he felt bad for shooting me there and then set me up with all this equipment. Um, which, you know, if that's his first time doing it, I'll let him off. He's made up for himself. <laughs> but it would have been better if it hadn't happened in the first place, of course. But hopefully going forwards, he won't feel the need to do that kind of thing anymore, right? Just stick that there for now. Yeah, so interesting interaction there with the two. Shame it came to that kind of conclusion. But at the same time, they've made up for themselves. And I do think going forwards, he's not likely going to do the same thing again. I think he's he feels bad for it and will in future. Oh boy, this, ter this terrain. We're going to leave that. We're going to... We're going to stick to using this for now. Let me head back to where I was. Basically, Sidewinder needs a lift up into his ship. I'll get you uh, back on your ship, my friend. Can you hear me on comms yet? Maybe ship comms. Do this nice and steady. Take off complete. And we'll head over to here and help him get on his ship. Because it looks like Forward. his ship's moved as well. It seems to be happening to all the ships around here. And we are going to have to third person this. There we are, job done. Right, well that was a very interesting day. What I'm going to do is uh, pop my ship down... I don't know, where I just was, I think, rather than down there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to salvage that vulture because it's... Well, you know, not salvage it, but get it because it's in a very awkward position. Landing gear deployed. But, uh, yeah, very interesting day with how that turned out. Thankfully, things have been um, made up for, personally. Landing complete. Again, shame it happened in the first place, but, you know, Engines. these things do happen. But, anyway, there we go. So, I'm just going to chill out at uh, Astor's Clearing for a little while. Uh, before calling it a day. A very unusual day. Started out quite nice, although we didn't find much to salvage at all. Ended up running into, I wouldn't say a couple of pirates, a couple of people who were a bit trigger happy, who put me down, then felt extremely bad about it, so they both sent me 100,000 each. They both recovered, well, one of them recovered all my gear, gave me that my gear back and everything else, and a lot of other stuff as well. Unfortunately, my vulture will not is un unrecoverable um so i'm just gonna chill out here and then make my way back i suppose but with that said i hope you enjoyed the video as i say a very strange day but this is sometimes how it goes uh i think the biggest issue there was that voip wasn't working when voip is working and you can say hello even if they can't speak back because they might not be using voip you can kind of establish a friendly tone and without voip you're just staring at each other, making each other uncomfortable. And I think that's likeliest as to why that happened. But, if you do enjoy these videos, there are plenty more in the Off-Grid series. I've put a playlist together so you can watch them all. They don't have to even be watched in order. They're just general day-to-day -day stuff. With me just hovering around, like, milling around in different ships, doing what I can. A lot is going on right now in Star Citizen, and it is a very exciting time. Uh, there will, well, actually, I don't know what day this is going out, but I had to cancel Friday's stream, unfortunately, to try and keep up with all the videos. But I will be streaming generally Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 2 and 6 p.m. BST, uh, sorry, UTC time. Currently GMT, but it'll soon be BST. Uh, we do a lot of this. We're probably going to be taking part in the Overdrive initiative. Looking forward to seeing what that's all about. What else is there? 
I don't think there is much else to say. Oh, as I say, the, the Toby Eye Tracker is 15% off. So if you are in the uh, in the market for a head tracking solution like this, now is a great time to pick it up. And using that code will give me a direct kickback. So thank you so much in advance. Be sure to subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. It does the channel a big favor. And tick that notification bell if you'd like to be notified when my videos go live. Again... A big thank you to my patrons and channel members for making these videos possible. Cannot do it without you guys. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.